With increasing competition, the whole market is like a business combat where every player must fight to survive. In this context, the strategies applied by Sun Tzu, a Chinese general, can be applied to the business itself. Sun Tzu framed 12 principles that are applied in war combat that can also be applied to business combat. In this video, we will tell you about Sun Tzu marketing strategy. But before starting the video, please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification icon so you'll get notified when we upload the next video. 10. Honour the customer Sun Tzu's customers were the people, the citizens of the empire. In marketing, people are our customers and our customers are king. We serve at their pleasure. Serve your customers. The ultimate objective of marketing is to produce products and services that not only satisfy customer needs, but delight them. So they will return and buy again. Target customers. Your target customers are those customers you can serve particularly well, based on your company's strengths. People who care about what you care about are more likely to recognize the quality of your products or service offering and be willing to pay for it. Find out what the customer thinks. Don't prioritize according to your needs. Don't guess about the customer's priorities. Ask your customer about his or her priorities and then prioritize your actions according to your customer's needs. 9. Organization of Intelligence What is needed in war is to obtain the name of the enemy leader and decide on his capacity, so as to calculate what his plans will be and make use of this survey to obtain success without great difficulty. Wu Qi on the art of war, know your market as well as you know yourself. A good formal and informal intelligence system coupled with good marketing practices puts you in the business of managing risks instead of taking risks. Assess your marketing opportunity. Sun Tzu lists five assessment factors that have modern marketing management equivalents. Analyze strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. And also learn from the experience of others. Prepare a competitive analysis. Know your competitors as organizations and as people. The best competitive analysis profiles not only the company, but also the characteristics of the top decision makers. When you truly understand your competitor as a person, you can more easily predict her or his future courses of action. Competitive comparisons analysis reveals competitive strengths, weaknesses and costs. Your customers are comparing your products and services to those of your competitor. You must also make similar comparisons in order to achieve competitive superiority. 8. Maintenance of the objective A clear intention and a steady aim is needed. Some strategists believe that the objective is the most important principle because without an objective, all of the other principles are pointless. The objective is intertwined with the strategy. The objective determines the what and the other principles guide the how. Get your objective right from the start. The business objective must be clearly defined, decisive and attainable. Actions must be clearly communicated and results must be measurable. Find a winning strategy. Of all the maxims in the art of war, fighting when victory is assured is among the most significant and useful because it clearly states that the way to win must be determined before the battle. The supreme excellence is to win without fighting. Be aware of strategic turns, also known as paradigm shifts, that can affect your business. Markets evolve, new products emerge, and the world moves on. Do not underestimate your competitors. Do not reject new information and consider your worst indicator. 7. The secure position the leader must take up a strong position, inspire others to follow him, discover where the enemy is weak and attack there. The art of war, occupy a position that cannot easily be taken by your opponents. A secure position establishes the basis for an offensive. A secure position helps you make use of your natural strength. Invisibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in the attack. Occupy the high ground in the market. Through the centuries, strategists have emphasized the importance of the strength that comes from having right on your side. In the art of war, moral influence is listed as the first of five fundamental factors. Conquesting is a strategy for finding the high ground in a segment of the market. The biscuit defence is to plan a good offence. When you are constantly on the defensive, you seldom win. If you stop the enemy attack, there will most likely be another one. 6. Offensive action Keep on the offensive to secure freedom of action. Offensive action provides initiative of movement. Offensive action keeps you in control. Action permits the manager to exploit the initiative and impose his or her will on the marketplace or the competition. The key to the successful offensive are skill, preparation, training, and above all, information. Seize the initiative. The most effective and decisive way to reach the objective is to seize, maintain, and exploit the initiative. 
Being on the offensive puts you in control of the relationship with your customers and forces your competitors to react. Tactics change in an infinite variety of ways to suit changes in the circumstances. Have a tactical flexibility by having offensive action. While strategies remain, constant tactics must be adapted to each new situation. 5. Surprise If you take a few men and make a sudden surprise attack on a narrow road with loud soundings of gongs and drums, the biggest army may be thrown into confusion. Surprise is the best way to gain psychological dominance and deny the initiative to your opponent. Surprise in marketing occurs most often when companies do not take new competition seriously. In the business arena, surprise is most often not an event but rather the result of recognising that something undesirable has been happening. Secrecy is a partner of surprise. The marketing application of the silent attack can be found in small, privately held companies and large corporations that grow their own management structure. In these organisations, marketing secrecy is easier to maintain than in companies with more mobile management staff. Strike the enemy at a time or place or in a manner for which he is unprepared. Do the unexpected. In war or in business, this requires speed, information, superiority and asymmetry. It's not necessary that the opponent be completely unaware, only that he becomes aware too late to react effectively. 4. Maneuver The easiest routes are often the most heavily defended. The longest way round can be the shortest way home. Maneuver is a way of thinking about how you move to a position of competitive advantage. Maneuver allows you to concentrate or disperse. Maneuver is simply a process of moving and acting in a way that puts your competitor at a disadvantage. Without thinking about how you can maneuver, the idea of fighting when you're outnumbered is ludicrous. When thinking about maneuvering, you understand how to attack specific segments, markets or accounts where you can win. Maneuver is the dynamic element of marketing. It's the means that enables small companies to compete against large ones and large ones to get bigger. Maneuver aimed at gaining leverage from the buying and selling relationship must be designed to give benefits to both parties. 3. Concentration of resources Mars sufficiently superior force at the decisive place and time, the concentration is a management commitment to the marketing offensive. The concentration is always of strength against weakness. The fundamental strategy for success in the marketing attack to plan a concentration of resources where needs have been identified, competition is weak, profit potential is high. The highest levels of success occur when resources are focused where decisive results can be achieved profitably. The essence of concentration of resources is the concentration of your strength against the opponent's weakness. Marketing concentration is not a mere mass of numbers, but rather a focusing of your marketing strategy and tactics. If your marketing force is weaker than your competitors, and if you fight head-to-head -head against your competitor, then you will end up with a very bad headache or no head at all. 2. Economy of force Assess accurately where you apply your resources. Economy of force requires a return on investment. Economy of force allocates all resources to the main effort. This military principle reveals the other side of the coin from concentration of resources. When you concentrate in one area, you'll be weak in other areas. Once you have decided where to concentrate, economy of force deals with the allocation of resources. The world economy in economy of force does not refer to economizing, rather it refers to the effective use of resources. Economy of force has two dimensions. Efficiency, avoiding the waste of time and resources. Effectiveness, getting the right results. 1. Build morale In order to kill the enemy, our men must be roused to anger. To gain an enemy's property, our men must be rewarded with war trophies. The human spirit can be the most important factor in success, but only when released by senior commanders. Morale is a byproduct of good management. Although highly morale is a component of the management, morale is not a separate objective. High morale happens when leaders to the right things communicate clearly. In interpersonal communications, the first rule is to focus on listening to what the other person wants to say. The second rule is to avoid emotional reactions. When that possibility arises, treat the discussion clinically. Win battles and the war. Marketing is the buying and selling up things with goodwill at a profit. If you can have only one, take goodwill because it is tomorrow's profit. This definition implies not only making the first sale, but also building a future business relationship that is nurtured with great service and quality. You want to keep customers because the lifetime value of their customers is an awesome number. Repeat customers are happy customers who recommend your business to others, tend to increase their purchases every year, and the cost of acquiring new customers is high, very high. Do let us know in the comments below which strategy you will use for your business. Thanks for watching.